Just two weeks after the 7-7 terrorist attacks on the London Underground, the capital is in chaos again. An incident happened here. It's been it's been sealed off. Yeah. yeah. Listen to me. You'll have to fight your way around. This is obviously Shepherd's Bush Green over here to my left hand side. That has completely been cordoned off. The area evacuated. Although this time the terrorists were unsuccessful, security has been stepped up. Okay then, cheers top. Now go, go, go full suspension, the uh, arm response is on the way. The network operations centre which monitors incidents on the tube is busier than ever. Set 46. Okay, so they're evacuating the station as a precaution. Um, obviously, we need people down there to ascertain the situation. Well, they're in the process of the evacuation. Yeah. Plus, they've got unattended packages because of one of them leaving some of their property behind. Is it never in there? Right. Uh, we'll just put Bond Street up because there's a, a central line train with an unattended bag just left Oxo going towards Bond Street. So it's going to be checked out of Bond Street now. Network operation manager. I would say that looks very much like he's just set everybody off. The London Underground recovery operation headed by Howard Collins presses on in a climate of unprecedented tension. Howard is up at dawn to board the very first train back into Aldgate. But for traumatised train operators such as Steve Eldridge, it'll be several weeks before he's ready to make what was once a routine journey. I've got to go back to Aldgate again. Um, what I can do about this, or what I plan to do, is just um, go down to Liverpool Street and then walk from Liverpool Street across to Allgate, so that I'm not actually going in on the train. Um, I am planning to go down onto the track and uh, go back to the area where the incident took place, um, just to um, satisfy myself that really that it's all over. All stations to Allgate, please stand clear of the door. I mean, obviously, the last two weeks I've worked on the recovery of all three sites. This is a pretty solemn occasion for us, but um, a great occasion. The tube is returning to normal. So is this your first trip down, or did you do some test running? Yeah, this is my first time back here. Yeah, so one of the trains, uh, which was uh, behind the incident train, was um, one of these. It is very eerie to see uh, three uh, trains in the sidings at this time of day, and normally they're out running. It's been strange all week seeing them abandoned in there. Yeah. But well, we're determined to get them out, you know, today, and hopefully at the end of the week. How many people have you got on board, though, customer-wise? Not many. Quite a few. Yeah. I was quite surprised there wasn't many people at Watford. Yeah. But the first train from Watford, yeah. Oh, we're coming into Allgate Station, and um, this is uh, the first time I've been back on uh, the front of a train. I spent most of my life um, the last two weeks either here or the other two sites. I think I know every inch of the platform. Certainly met a lot of the staff who, um, you know, I've got three and a half thousand staff, but I think these are very special people to me now. One down and two to go for me. Edgware Road and King's Cross. Okay, station all change here, please. Can you please ensure when you leave the train you take all your luggage and personal belongings with you? All change here, please. All the train. Just uh, checking for sort of uh, anyone who's left anything behind. These are quite tricky trains because. Um, they have seats which go this way, so you've got to just make sure nothing's been left between them. I'm amazed actually how um, 500 articles have been left behind since uh, the 7th of July, which have caused service disruption. Over about 70 major shutdowns of the service because people forget things. Is 
going to take some time before we see all our regular customers here, but you know, this is rush hour time and we're starting to see people come through, you know, that perhaps 60-70% of the people who would normally be here on a normal day. Well, the first time when I came back and I saw that there was someone laid the flowers on the platform too, went down there and read the, the notes and you kind of feel it, you know, feel sorry for them. But other than that, I just, just carry on as normal. Can't let them beat me. I think there's a level of defiance and support from all of us in terms of making sure the tube runs okay today. At Edgware Road, now the incident train has been removed, engineers have repaired the damaged cables in the tunnel, and trains are being tested. Steve Goska is the group station manager. One of the hardest things for me has been yesterday, in fact, when I had to escort one of the families of the bereaved around the station here. Um, we had the, uh, the wife of a chap who died on the train here, and his three sons, and his brother and really it's sort of knowing what to say to them. I took them down to this platform here to show them the spot where the train exploded so they, they could actually see where their loved one died, which is very, very difficult. Um, they said it was part of the close-out process for them and that, you know, that they had to do it. They came here and they laid their flowers here and uh, it was a full week before they'd heard that they'd lost uh, their dad and their husband, so that must have been just unbelievable. Due to the extensive forensic examination on the track between Russell Square and King's Cross, London Underground have only been able to start their recovery work here over the last few days. We're on the Piccadilly Line platforms in the heart of King's Cross station. This is, you know, yards away from the incident down the tunnel. Uh, up until very recently we had no idea what the damage was, uh, what work we had to do to get the service back up and running and uh, normality back to the tube. You've been down on site and had a look round. I mean, what have you seen down there? I mean, obviously now repaired, brackets yeah, well, back up. The, the brackets back up, there's still some damaged cables there. Yeah. We still need another clean. Right. Um, but generally speaking, it's going along well. Yeah. The testing of the cables are absolutely critical because we don't know which cables are damaged and which right. aren't. Right. The visuals, you can see, so but the internal damage, we to test we're, we're, we're powering up now. Right. Um, and hopefully by the morning we will have tested all the cables and then we'll know exactly where we are. Absolutely fantastic. I personally rode round um, on the first train in here from Paddington at uh, quarter to six this morning. Um, strange feeling, but just glad to be open again and back to some sort of normality. It feels strange, very strange, because then not many people coming in. It's supposed to be a very busy station, but at the moment it's only Wimbledon train. A lot of people still don't know it, whether it's open or not. And some people are still frightened. I feel, I feel strange coming in here really today. A few days later, Russell Square opened and the Piccadilly line ran as normal. It's a bit anxious, but I knew I had to get to Piccadilly Circus, so I just had to carry on. You could be a target anywhere. I mean, I'm not, I don't think you should, lightning doesn't usually strike twice in the same place, so. A bit nervous, um, as anyone would be, but uh, it was okay. I just there weren't there wasn't that packed as usual. It's usually really crowded, so I got my seat. Um, I was just glad to get off it. Basically. Personal information: Train platform four is your Hammersmith and City Line service to Hammersmith. Mohammed Jamil is back at work on the Edgware Road platform. In his spare time, he tends to the indoor gardens. Remarkably, the plants were cared for while the station was closed. For the first couple of weeks we couldn't water it. But last week, uh, some policemen uh, watered it. When I came here, I told them what I wanted to do. He said, leave it to us, we'll do some watering for you. So it was quite nice of them to do it. 
We want to do a f water feature actually on the wall, next to the wall, and uh, then we want to put a plaque up there in memory of the people who lost their lives. Uh, it's a sad thing, but we can't do nothing what has happened. All we can do is pray for them and pray for the people who did it that God forgive them as well. But they shouldn't have done it. It's not in anybody's favor to do the things like that. It's not in, it shouldn't be in their control. God has given us the life. He's the only one who should take it, not human beings. A honeymooning couple managed to win Jane over tonight in a bid to make their flight, but what works for some doesn't work for others, it would seem. For battles at the boarding gate, tune in to Skyreel Lives for Airline at 8 tonight.